So this is my talk for uh, about doubly sliced links. Uh, this work is all joint with Duncan McCoy. So first, first off, I'm going to define some terms. So a knot K is smoothly sliced if it's the boundary of a disk in B4. So that's maybe the definition people are most familiar with. But alternatively, we can think of it as K is slice if it is the slice or cross section of a knotted sphere in S4. Um, and you know we have these nice schematics here. Uh, to visualize this. Um, but uh, if we wanted to, the reason that I'm uh, pre presenting this alternative definition is because, you know, a, a knot, we can talk about a knot being doubly sliced if it is the cross section of instead an unknotted S2. So this is what doubly slice is, but how do we do this in the context of links? Well, we're going to restrict ourselves um, in this talk to uh, two component links. So um, for two component links, there's this dichotomy where you can think of strong double slicings, which are cross sections of two component sphere on links versus weak double slicings, which are cross sections of one component sphere on links. And so a really basic question is, can we tell these properties apart? Uh, and of course the answer is, is yes. Um, it's actually not that hard. Um, so for two components, the zero framed two cable of a slice, but not doubly sliced knot is weakly, but not strongly doubly sliced. So why is it weakly doubly sliced? Well, we can take the disc, we can take an eye thickening of it. We can take the boundary of that disc. We'll get this zero frame two cable. But in particular, we also get this nice sphere, which we know is unknotted because there's this natural ball that it's the boundary of. So why aren't they strongly doubly sliced? Well, they don't have doubly sliced uh, components. But in some sense, this is kind of this is kind of cheating, right? You know, this isn't this isn't really looking at the link itself. It's kind of just just looking at the components. So you know, one question we might ask is, how can we tell the difference in a way that doesn't use the individual components? Well, we'll need an a construction, and we'll need an obstruction. So first. Let's go over the construction. So the double of any tangle with no closed components is weakly doubly sliced with both quasi orientations. That's our construction. And so what's the idea here? Well, if we take a tangle, right, we can think of that as a subtangle of a doubly sliced knot, you know, K. Um, so first, what you can do is you can kind of join all of the ends to get a single component. Then we know that, you know, K connects some K bar is doubly sliced for any K. Uh, but then the second point is that if we have this tangle, uh, that's kind of sitting as this cross section, um, you know, kind of this intersection of this sphere uh, and this S3. What we can do is we can kind of modify what S3 we use to kind of go over that sort of tangle region two times, which we kind of see in this, this in the schematic below. Okay, so as a corollary of this, we see that this particular link, the pretzel link P39 minus 9 minus 3, is weakly doubly slice. And in particular, and you know, we can see that we're kind of doubling this tangle on the right. And in particular, this tangle is or this link is going to be not strongly doubly sliced. So, what's our obstruction? So, our obstruction is going to be involve the following. So, first, we have this proposition which says that if we have a strongly doubly sliced link, then we know that the double branch cover of that link splits S1 cross S3 into two rational homology S1 cross B3s, X1 and X2. Uh, so, what's the idea there? Well, we know that the double branch cover of S4 branched along the two components sphere unlink is S1 cross S3. And then we just think about how that restricts to the splitting sphere for L. The, that, you know, the splitting S3. Um, so, uh, so for pretzel links and more generally Montesinos links, um, we also know that this double branch covers a ciphered fiber space, which bounds these, which bound these natural semi-definite plumbings, which we'll call W, okay? So by gluing this W to X1 and, and X2, we get these two closed definite four manifolds, which we can then apply Donaldson's theorem to, to say that you know, we get these embeddings of Q's intersection form, or sorry, of W's intersection form uh, into a diagonal lattice. Uh, and this is gonna be the primary obstruction to, um, to being strongly doubly sliced because, um, so in particular, what we have is that you, we have these, this family of pretzel links. So you know, we can go A, to a1 to an and then sort of the negations in the opposite order minus an to minus a1 we know that this is weakly doubly sliced by the kind of the construction we had but we know that it's actually not strongly doubly sliced if um, these ai are not relatively prime so in particular you know we have we have this this guy right here um, which is um not strongly doubly sliced but in particular, we also know that the, the components are unknotted. So this kind of answers the original question we were trying to ask. Uh, 